Hi everyone. Welcome to Cards and Coffee. We made it to Wednesday. We made it to hump day. Finally we're here. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to get on today. It has been just one of those weeks and I'm hoping to take tomorrow and the next day off work. And so as you can imagine things are a little bit hectic. Why is it always when you want to take a break things are just crazy because you're trying to prepare yourself so that you can actually have a break. It's just, it seems unfair. <laughs> seems that things should just wind down slowly until you're on a break. So you start breaking and then you're breaking. But anyways, that's not the way it works. So I have been swamped and I wasn't actually even sure if I was going to be able to get on here today, but I'm here and I am so glad you're here with me. And I do have a really fun card to share with you today. It's a little bit different. Because, as you know, I am not doing Christmas yet, partly because it's just too early and partly because I love fall so much. I know it's not quite fall either, so maybe some of you are like, but why are we doing fall? It's a little early to do fall, but I love fall colors. I love all the colors of fall. I love the weather of fall. I love the leaves falling from the trees. I love everything about fall. And so I don't want to rush through fall without giving it its proper attention. So today we are going to be using the Beauty of Friendship. And you have probably seen cards in the past um, that I have done with the Beauty of Friendship. For example, this one is more of a spring-summer card. And so this set is one of the reasons I love this set is because it's so versatile across the seasons. You will see me using this again over Christmas absolutely 100%. So this is a spring summer kind of version. Today we're going to look at a fall option and then come winter and Christmas you can totally make this a seasonal holiday card as well. So this is such a versatile stamp set that you can just kind of change up to be all sorts of different things throughout the whole year. It's not something that you just pull out at Christmas time by any means. And so anyways, for those of you who are new to Cards and Coffee, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. You found Sarah Lynn Duque on all the, um, what do you call those? On all the different platforms online, you will find me as Sarah Lynn Stamps. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook currently. So look me up and give me a nice like and thumbs up. And of course, if you share this video with your friends who might also be interested in some easy crafting ideas, I would be ever so grateful. But I am thankful that you are here. On Wednesdays, what we do during Cards and Coffee is we try to take a really easy card, 15 to 20 minutes maximum, um, that is really simple, something that you could make on a lunch hour that you could rework into multiple different ways and um, give you some quick and easy ideas. So welcome. Today we are doing fall with the beauty of friendship. Let's get started. So what I have today is I have a piece of white cardstock and you could use white, you could use vanilla, whatever color you have on hand. And this card measures five by three and three quarters. So five this way and three and three quarters this way. So what we're going to do is some really easy ink blending today. And so one of the wonderful things, I've got my blending brushes here, and this is the one I have reserved for all of my greens. I'm going to pull up the old olive, but what I was trying to say is one of the great things about ink blending, or about cards in general, is that just by the colors you choose um, in this specific card, you're gonna be able to define what season or what holiday you're making this card for. Now, if you've been with me before, you will also know that my camera is on my table or my ta camera holder. And so I am kind of, sometimes I shake you as I get going. And um, sorry, my daughter says the phone's for me, but they will have to wait. Um, anyways, so today with the colors we're going to use are very fallish colors. So I have old olive here. I have my green brush. And so I just kind of circle this on the top of the ink pad. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go starting off of the card. I'm going to go all the way to the other side and back and forth like this. And I'm just going to keep on adding the color. Now, the reason I'm doing this off of the card is because you can see, for example, if I was to just start right here, you can see how I'm getting sort of a line where I started. Now, I don't really like that when I'm trying to blend my colors. So I'm going to just go across. And if you happen to do that, don't worry about it. Because as you add color, those sort of lines are going to kind of just get blended in. So it's not really a huge deal. But starting on and off your paper 
kind of helps to eliminate that. So you can go in circles if you like, but I really am trying to put defined colors here in sort of, of almost like a straight pattern here. So the bottom here, as you can tell, is going to be the ground. And I'm just using Old Olive. So if you wanted to pick up more ink at a time, you could. You could just swirl this more. And I'm gonna maybe do that at the bottom here to get some darker color. But I like to build it up because then I know I can have it lighter, I can have it darker, I can have some portions darker like the bottom and then work up so that it's a little bit lighter at the top, however that works. And I hope I'm not shaking you too much, but uh, we will make it work. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more. Anyways, that's all that I wanna do here with the green. So I'm gonna set aside my old olive and the next color I'm going to use is pumpkin pie. Now this is a really great fall color, as you can imagine with the pumpkin in there. But it's also a really saturated color. So I don't find, I find that um, the color goes on really easily. Like you don't need a lot to get a nice pumpkin pie color. So I'm going to do the same, start off my paper and I'm gonna just go up and down like this. And I'm gonna blend it a little bit into the green and I'm gonna just go up like this again until I have the color that I want. As you can see, I kind of oops, but it'll be okay. Our skies are not solid. They have variations of color as you go. And so this is going to look just lovely, just how it is. All right, so we've got some pumpkin pie in there and I have got um, to put this away. I'm going to pull out my next color, which is so saffron. And so just a tip here, when you have these, these are completely washable. So if you ever wanted to change the colors of these, you could just use a little bit of hand soap and rinse them out. You don't even, um, you can even just rinse them with water. And, or what I do is if I'm gonna just change colors is you really just swirl it on your desktop like this and you're gonna notice the color is dissipating. So at, until when you don't see any more color or when it's light enough that it doesn't matter, you can just switch to the next color. But I do try to stay in color family. So I had a, a green brush, an orange brush, and now I've got my yellow brush, which is so saffron. And again, I'm just pushing here at the top got ink all over my hands. Let's open my pad and then we're going to swirl some so saffron and we're going to do the same thing here at the top. So if you're trying to make it to be more of a sunset, um, you probably want the light at the bottom because that's where the sun would go down first. But in this case, I'm just trying to make a fall sky. So I'm just trying to use fall colors to make this a nice fall card. So all we're doing here is laying down color as much as we want. And I actually kind of like that white peeking through there. I think it's sort of like, you know, a little bit of cloud or something, but we're gonna make sure we overlap where we're blending between the orange and the yellow. And then again, the green and the orange we blended between there. So there we've got our colors laid down on our cardstock. And literally it doesn't take very long to do this. Like I said, you could just change up these colors to be different colors of blue if you wanted it to be more of a, a winter or a spring card. If you wanted to make this a silhouette card, um, you could do that as well. And just one second, I'm sorry. I've got to make these people hang up. Let's decline them. Sorry about that. My kids' school, they um, send messages, but they send messages to the home line and then they send messages to the cell phones and I forgot to put it on do not disturb, so I apologize for that. Anyways, we're back in motion. So what we're going to do now is we are gonna kind of do a silhouette, but not exactly. We're gonna still use a dark green. So I've got mossy meadow here and we are going to stamp our trees here. So the stamp that I'm going to actually use today is not the solid one because I find that it just kind of, when we've got such a pretty background, I want it to kind of peek through and we're and this just kind of covers up too much of the background for my liking. So I'm just gonna use this detail stamp here for my trees today. Now, when you're trying to add sort of depth to your card, always things that are farther away are gonna look a little bit lighter and the things that are a little bit closer are darker. So the way that we can do that is with a sort of a second, what do they call it? Second mm, generation stamping. I was a second step is not quite right. So second generation stamping means that between your first stamp and your second, you don't re-ink, you get two different stamps. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna ink up here in my mossy meadow. I'm gonna put in a full strength tree right here in the front. And then I'm going to stamp without re-inking just a little bit farther up. And that gives the illusion that that tree is farther away than the one in the front. Okay, so we're gonna do that 
a couple more times here so make sure you get your thing inked up nicely I'm going to add a darker tree right here and then I'm going to I want to one that's a little lighter over there. So you can add as many trees as you want. I'm actually going to just stamp off here on my paper and I want to put one that looks like it's a little bit back there and I want to put one that is a little bit up here. Full strength. Okay, so you're going to just keep doing that until you have the number of trees that you want. I think I'm good with what I have. Okay. So the next step to this card is we are going to make this really simple today. So I'm hoping I'm not going to get ink on everything. That's the one thing about um, ink blending is you do tend to get a little bit of ink on your hands. So having like a wipe close by is always a good idea. I am not that prepared, obviously. So we're going to add some seal to the back of the card that we just, the portion that we just made. And I'm going to add, layer that on to a piece of cinnamon cider cardstock just like this and then I'm going to actually today use very vanilla this is not something that I use a lot of I just don't even think about it I am always using just white basic white um, but I think this looks really nice on a fall card okay so let's give this a little bit of a push here we're going to take out our bone folder and give it a nice firm crisp so that our card will lay nice and flat and then we are going to add this onto the front here. But because I'm not 100% sure yet if I want to put that on dimensionals, I'm just going to leave it like that for the moment. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to take a scrap piece and we're going to stamp our sentiment. So I have got cinnamon cider here, which coordinates with the background. I am going to stamp the sentiment that says, you truly inspire me. And the one thing to think of, I'm going to be punching this out, is that you leave enough room around your image here to be able to punch it out. Sometimes I put, I put it too close to the edge and then the punch doesn't cover it. So just give yourself enough space to be able to do that. So I have stamped that in cinnamon cider and I am going to use today this punch that I don't even remember what it's called. I didn't look it up, so I apologize. This, um, this punch is very versatile. You can use it here for your sentiments really quickly and easily. You can also just punch out various pieces of designer series paper and just kind of stagger them together on a card for a background. It's just really, really versatile and really um, a great thing to have on hand. But anyways, we have punched out our sentiment now. And if you saw that I stamp and then I look at the back um, when I'm punching so I can make sure that I get it in the middle. I like to stamp and then punch. Some people like to punch and then stamp, but I find this make sure that it gets centered where I want it to be every single time. Okay, so I know that I am going to raise this up here with dimensionals. I am just trying to decide if I want to put on some linen thread around there. But you know what? I think I'm going to skip that. I think I'm just going to keep, keep this really nice and simple today and not put the linen thread on there. So because I don't have any ribbing going behind my cardstock here, I'm going to just put it directly on with seal and not raise it up with dimensionals. If I had some ribbon around there, it would add a little bit of bulk behind my card. And I would probably want to use dimensional so that my card would lay flat and I wouldn't have sort of a bumpy layer on the top here. Okay, let's make sure we've got our card going the right way, which we do. And look how pretty these colors look together. Aren't they gorgeous? Yes, they are. <laughs> All right, so we've got our trees on our very vanilla. Like I tried it on white. The white was really stark against the fall color. So the very vanilla is a really great option when you're working with oranges and browns. And, and then we're going to just stick that up there with some dimensionals. So I'm going to just put three of them on here. And stick that down right over here in the corner. Now you could put this wherever you want to on your card. I kind of intended to put it right here a little bit to the left. So that's what we're going to do. And let's just finish our card with a few of the new brushed metallic adhesive back dots. So I think any of these colors are going to look lovely, but I think I am going to maybe stick with the gold today. So you could also emboss the um, sentiment in gold if you decided to go with a gold color palette. Uh, that would look really nice also. And 
I think I'll just stick one down there. And there we go, you guys. We have a quick and easy card, but I think it looks like it took a lot of effort because we've got our blended background on there. It really didn't. You guys saw what we did. So a couple of things to remember. One is just to keep adding the color until you're happy with how much color you've got saturated on there. Try to start off your paper when you're blending. That really helps um, eliminate a lot of solid lines in your blending as well. And if you want to add uh, images so that they're closer and farther away you just use a second generation stamping so stamp off before you do your background images to give that illusion of distance so there's a couple of great tips for you today on this really beautiful easy fall card and so I just wanted to remind you that tomorrow is mystery stamping so if you're not familiar with that look up the events on my Facebook page gives you some more information what you do is you bring the supplies that are listed you don't know what card we're making we're all going to make something a little bit different depending on what supplies we have on hand um, and I'll give you the instructions to put your card together it's a really fun interactive time that we get together every the last Thursday of every month so tomorrow is the day at 7 o'clock p.m eastern standard time not eastern standard time <laughs> I do not live in the East. Mountain Standard Time. I live in Southern Alberta, people. Mountain Standard Time. I'm not even sure where that came from. Tomorrow at 7, Mountain Standard Time. And also, I wanted to just bring remind you, if you saw my post yesterday, I'm really excited about the Hope Box. So that was this month's Paper Pumpkin Box that came as part of my subscription. And all of those who are part of the Paper Pumpkin would have received their box. But... They have made this beautiful box available for purchase without a subscription this month. So you can go to my online store, order the Hope Box, and make all the beautiful cards that you would have seen on my page. I posted them yesterday. And there's also a video showing how to make the cards posted on my page as well. So just $24 for that box um, while supplies last. So if you are interested in that, and guess what? When you purchase through my store, that Hope Box is going to count towards Celebration Rewards. So Celebration is with every $60 order, you get to choose free rewards out of the Celebration catalog, which looks like this. Um, so getting that Hope Box, adding that $24 will just get you closer to getting your free items this month. Anyways, if you are interested in Beauty of the Friendship set, you know where to find it on my online store. I will put a link into the description after our live today. But I am so thankful you guys were all here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and enjoy your break. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.